Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to talk about mate connectors in Onshape. So the mate connector, you'll see it looks like this little like clock-like symbol up over here. Uh, and when I first started using Onshape, I didn't really know what it meant or what it did coming from Fusion 360. So the more I started modeling with Onshape, the more I started seeing the mate connectors come up. And then the more I realized that they're kind of useful for doing a bunch of things. So today I'm gonna to go over a couple examples why you wanna use mate connectors and basically how you can uh, move them or manipulate them to do what you wanna do. So I first um, uh, thought of mate connectors when doing assemblies. So like in Fusion 360, you'd be able to kind of create sketches and then constrain your parts to sketches. And in Onshape, you can't do that, but you can use mate connectors in parts or sketches make them visible and then use them in assemblies kind of like the same way. So let's create something and use a mate connector for it. Um, one example I had was kind of like taking a, a student of mine was doing like some tic-tac-toe board where he had a round spinner for the X's and O's that would sit into this like squared out notch on this plastic piece. And if I have a picture, I'll post it up. If not, no big deal. I'm gonna show you kind of what it was. So let's create a sketch here. And I'm just going to make some sort of uh, rectangular block, some flat surface. Like this dimensions are not even important. And let's create a sketch here. This is where that round portion is going to be. All right, so he had this kind of piece right here. And then the cylinder would sit inside of it. So what we can do is, is typically like when you go to create an assembly, there may not be something for you to have a mate or constraint into for like a Revolut. What we can do is in this, we can put a mate connector. So I'm gonna create a sketch right here. And I'm gonna take a point and let's say like, I don't know, it's somewhere around there. Now I can come in, put a mate connector right on this point. Now, as we do this, you can see that the axis gets like tweaked or sometimes it's a hard to pick. So if I'm like hovering over and I can't necessarily get where I want, if you hold down shift, it then allows you to kind of scroll through and pick ones that you want as you hover over. So holding down shift is like a big deal when doing these mate connectors. But this, that point is relatively easy. Now, if you notice that blue axis, or I believe the Z axis is pointing up. Well, if I have a cylinder that's gonna sit in here, I need it to come out towards the screen. So we can realign it. And I can realign it based on the geometry of my part. So I want this blue axis coming towards me like that. So now that's my blue axis. And notice it picked not the point, there we go. And now I have a mate connector set up for where I'd want to put some sort of Revolut. I hit the check or any other mate. And there we have it. So I'm going to go create an assembly, bring this part in. And notice that mate connector is there. So it's super nice. So I can go into creating a part in context. I can actually select the mate connector, hit check, and create a sketch on that plane right there. So if you notice that mate connector now is the origin for my next part. I could have picked the origin, but I clicked that mate connector. Let's put some sort of axle in there. And you know what? Let's use, let's project geometry of this bottom edge so I can make something tangent. So there's that like piece that's gonna be rolling on that little surface. Hit the check mark. Let's extrude this. Um, know, let's just go all the way this way. Let's just say it sits that way. Insert and go into assembly. And now I have it. So that piece is rotating, is gonna be able to rotate on there. And let's see, let's do that. So it moves, but it's created or bound to that. Uh, let's go like this. Let's go back to that part studio. Oh. 
that. Assembly. We're going to edit in context just to show something that it's rotating. Let's create a sketch on the back end of this. And uh, I just want to do something that shows that it can rotate on that. Okay, kind of like this like little bolt thing that's gonna rotate there. Let's go to the assembly. And now I can take my Revolute Mate, put it right here, line it up with that. And now this will rotate, let's fix this piece, on that whole assembly right there. So it's just one way that I found that a mate connector is super useful is when creating these, these mates that don't necessarily have the mate connectors in them uh, initially. And now also you could move that mate connector and then change the height or change within that assembly all by itself. So that's one way. Uh, the other way is with sketch planes, uh, which I didn't really ever think about, but it's actually better than creating other planes. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. We can keep with this same part. Uh, let's go to uh, Park Studio 2. Let's take a look at the, the bolt here or whatever it might be. Let's say I want to do any sort of angled feature coming off of here. Well, I can create a, uh, a mate connector, right? So I can pick like right here, right? So that's where I want the mate connector to be, but I don't like this axis. So we could realign. I could say, I want my axis to come out this direction. We can flip it. And now this, the green and red become my X and Y axes. I can actually realign the secondary axis right there. And that looks like it's gonna be. We can then move this. So if I want, I could rotate around this X axis to create an angle. Let's say we want a 30, let's do 30 degree angle. Notice it brings it up like that. I can then move it too, almost like I'd be creating an offset plane all within this mate connector. And let's go like a 0.25 inches. Let's move it up like that. So you see that moved that Z in that direction. We could try, let's see zero, moves it back. Do 0.25 in that direction, which is gonna move it there. All right, Y, same thing down All right but in any case so that is my mate connect that is that mate right there and because I rotated on that angle I can now create a sketch using the mate connector so he says select mate connector right up over here in the sketch plane well, there it is there's my sketch on that 30 degree angle so whatever it is we can do we can Hit N on the keyboard, brings it into view. Let's say um, we're going to put some, I don't know, feature into there. A little circle. Like that. Let's uh, remove a little bit of material. And now that's, now if I don't like that angle, I just go into the mate connector. I can edit it and say, you know what? I really needed a 45 degree angle. Check it. And now that changes that. So there you have it. So now that's using the make connector as a sketch plane, or instead of using the sketch plane function, I'm just using the make connector, which I feel has a little bit more versatility because you get to pick what you want. Now let's say I can even want it not even centered. I wanted a different sketch plane, maybe like a little bit off center. So you can use that in sketches and then you can create your make connectors around sketches. So let's, do one right on the surface of this. And I put a, well, let's do a construction circle off of this. And I don't know, let's just say some random point. It could either be right there. Check that off. I can then create a mate connector around that specific point. And I can just move it if I wanted to. Let's just say that I'm gonna flip the direction so now that that z-axis is pointing up and I move it one inch up. That's my new plane right there. And then I can even rotate it and do anything else around that as well. Let's keep it there. And that can be used later for further on for an assembly or not. So that's one. 
Uh, you could use it for patterning also. If I want, let's see, I might be able to use this one right here. So if I'm gonna do a circular pattern of this part, and let's say the axis, I'm gonna pick. So now the problem with using the axis here is that this part is gonna rotate around that blue. We want for the, the axis for a pattern rotation is always around that Z axis or the blue. So if I change it, the axis on it, then I can change the rotation, I can change the pattern feature of it. So for example, if I pick the mate connector here, see it rotates it that way around the blue. Um, but if I don't want that, we could do it differently. We can put a pattern somewhere else. We could take this mate connector. Let's see. And I could do something similar. Take a mate connector. Let's go right here. Same thing. So now I have a mate connector there. We can move this or realign the axes. Let's do that. Realign primary axis now. did not change. Yes, it did. The blue changed right there. Like that. And then I can move that off in the X direction there. Like that. So now when I go to pattern this part, I'm just using circular patterns here. I can pick this and there it goes like that. I'm just doing some random part here with the pattern, but I'm just showing you that now you can use these make connectors pretty much everywhere. And I think the key to using Onshape in a more efficient way is using the make connectors. Um, there's other things you could do in assemblies as well with the make connectors. It's really no different, but if you have the sketches here, so if I open up, let's just bring this right into an assembly, right? Notice all these make connectors are here every ones that I use. So when I go to insert more parts, right? So I can insert this part itself, or I hit the drop down, or I hit any of these parts, notice that the mate connectors always follow them. So it's nice. It's the, the, the what I was looking for from Fusion 360 to be able to use sketches, I now just use mate connectors. So it's a pretty nice thing. I hope you enjoyed this video on mate connectors. There's a bunch of other things you can do with them. These are probably the two most important ways with creating sketchers and also patterning parts, uh, sketch planes and patterning parts that I feel that mate connectors are best. And obviously within using them within assemblies, it just makes life a lot easier, especially when you're trying to join uh, geometry or parts together in ways that maybe doesn't seem intuitive for on shape. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, briefing on mate connectors. If not, I don't know. I don't have to tell you, but pl please be sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos. Um, next, I'll probably do one on just sketch planes themselves, though maybe it's obsolete with the mate collector. Who knows? We'll see how we use them there. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.